G'day guys, Chris again from Core Electronics. This is the expansion board 2.0 from PyCom. You put it underneath your PyCom microcontrollers and it gives you some basic inputs and outputs. Let's have a look at the bench and we'll see here that a PyCom microcontroller, any of them, will go straight into a breadboard. That's great. All you really need to do is at the top here, provide power and that's uh, in the range of 3.3 to 5.5 volts. And by default, your microcontroller will create a wireless access point which you can join and then program it using Telnet and FTP. It's important to note there that there's no reverse bias protection on that power socket, so if you get the polarity wrong, you'll do damage. Also, the pins are not 5 volt tolerant, so make sure that you're only using the 3.3 volts which is supplied out of the third pin to do any peripherals that come back into the microcontroller. If you decide you want to have a serial connection to the PC, you would normally add an FTDI board. This one here has a voltage selector between 5 or 3.3 volts. Make sure you select the 3.3 volts and everything will be fine. All right, now let's have a look at the expansion board. Here it is, if I turn it up the right way. On the expansion board, we first have a socket in the middle, which takes your microcontroller. All of the microcontrollers fit from the PyCom range, and they actually fit backwards if you want to. Uh, when I say if you want to, don't do that, that will do them damage. Make sure you connect them the right way around, which is having the LED at the top at the same end as the USB socket. So that's the inside row of female pin headers there. The outside row of pin headers is space for you to add jumper leads to a breadboard if you're prototyping, or if you've built a circuit that has pin headers, you can drop them straight on there. The USB port at the top obviously is used for power and communications. There's a built-in FTDI chip, so a serial connection with the microcontroller is created just by dropping it on the expansion board. So you have two ways you can connect. Here we have a battery port where we can connect a standard lithium ion or lithium polymer cell. Some really good uh, features of that. There's a power multiplexer, so if either of these uh, power sources is connected, or indeed if you just go straight onto the pin headers, um, whichever power source is available will be selected to power the project. If two sources are available and one of them is the battery, then the battery will be charged automatically. And so as you change the power sources around, there'll be no dropouts in power. There are a couple of LEDs down the right hand side of the board here. There's one called USB which uh, lights up uh, when the USB has power on. Another one has CHG which is charging of the battery. And there's a user configurable LED and button as an output and an input. At the bottom here we have a standard micro SD slot. Micro SDs obviously have to be formatted with FAT16 or FAT32 and I think there's a 16 gigabyte limit there. On the left is a set of jumpers which allow you to disconnect any of the default configuration of the board so you can have, uh, have it configured your own way. If you have a look at the pinout diagram on the PC with me, you can see in the top right of the board there are red and black connectors there for voltage in. The 3.3V, which is shown in red, is a 3.3 volt rail that comes from a regulator on the microcontroller. So if there's no microcontroller fitted, there's no 3.3 volt on that pin. There are some light blue tags there. Uh, four of them are labeled FTDI and three of them are labeled SD something. So obviously the FTDI is for, for uh, communicating back to the PC that's on the USB. SD obviously connects to the SD socket at the bottom. If you want to disconnect either of those features, uh, sorry, I don't think you can connect, disconnect the SD card, but uh, the jumpers, the top four jumpers, as shown in the bottom left of the diagram, down here, the top four jumpers allow you to disconnect that FTDI. So if you want to use both serial ports that are available on the microprocessor, you can do that and disconnect the one from the USB. The yellow tags there on the left uh, show that when the reset button is pushed on the microcontroller, that that can be used to reset slave devices, a GPS or whatever. On the bottom left is an LED and button uh, label there. So they connect obviously to the LED and button uh, that are on the board. And on the right hand side there's VBAT. And below it is a little voltage divider circuit. So the battery voltage, uh, the raw battery voltage is divided down and made available at P16 as an analog input so you can measure the battery voltage at any time. 
The rest of those pin headers, if we look again at the bottom, there's a disconnector uh, for the battery uh, so that the pin, pin P16 can be connected to something else and isn't directly connected to the battery. Below that, the user LED can be disconnected. And at the bottom there, you can see CHG, the charge rate on the battery can be either 100 or 450 milliamps. The user button there doesn't have a disconnect because it's a normally open contact and does nothing unless it's pressed. All right, so that's our overview of the expansion board 2.0 from PyCon, a beautiful little board that goes with all of your PyCon microcontrollers. Have a look for another video shortly. We'll be putting up a getting started guide which will show you some basic programming. Hit the link below for the documentation. Thanks for watching coreelectronics.com.au.